and a very good afternoon here on the 4th of May 2018. My name is Rishi Patel, co-founder of Master of the Markets, the Elite Traders Conference and the Traders Open Day. And a very warm welcome into the analysis for the week. We are net flat here at Master of the Markets uh, this week, and that is natural given the fact that last week, of course, was an 11.68% return, representing £5,150 of net bottom line profit uh, from last week, the second biggest month in the history of the uh, live trading room here at Master of the Markets, uh, certainly for the live trading room. I know the Vedanta Elite trading room has its own set of statistics, but an 11.68% return on our investment and a £5,150 uh, upside based on uh, paper mount, of course, is an excellent result. And we expect perhaps for the following week to be a little quieter. Uh, we did have a couple of trade opportunities which I want to analyze, but we didn't take and, and cancelled Let's look at those. Uh, the first one is here on the dollar against the Swiss franc, uh, which you can see has pretty much had lots and lots of dollar strength coming into the market the last couple of weeks, and it's a very strong trend at the upside. And we were looking for a counter trend trade opportunity here based on the money bars trading model. Uh, let's go ahead and review actually what that one looked like just there. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab my drawing tool as we normally do. There we go. Uh, so we were looking at this particular bar here to become a, a swing high. Uh, that was the projection just there. We were looking for a confirmed high. And the way that that would have happened is the market would have dropped off at that point. So we did place a pending order on this uh, trade opportunity just here. Our entry was for the low minus two pips. Our stop was for the high plus five. And we're not really looking... Um, for entering the market in any other way. Now, this did not trigger us into the trade. This next bar did not break below the low. Uh, and so once it broke the high of this bar on this day here, that's obviously an invalid trade opportunity. It's no longer going to become the swing high. It's not the highest point. And so we cancelled that order. That was pretty much the only trade opportunity that we had this week, really, here on Money Bars. And I'm not really too surprised by that. The reason that that's happening... The reason that that's happening is because we have had such an aggressive move here in the markets for which we have been able to capture some of the upside based on the trading strategies that we have here. Um, but of course, because now the market is still running one way, we haven't had a pullback at this time. We obviously haven't had a further trade opportunity just yet. And that's okay. Uh, sometimes we need those weeks to be reflective, to catch up with our trade journals, to catch up with our system and uh, system and cash curves, to find out you know how closely we are performing according to our expectations. And as you all know by now, for those of you following the Forex Friday regularly, we do have uh, that trade performance, that trade journal, we have locked down as a series of equity curves. So we're always constantly measuring what our performance is against the cash performance. So if you look at this graph here, first of all, you can see that the system is actually up 13.17%. And the cash amount here is up 11.74%. So there is currently a disparity between the two of minus 1.43%. It means that the system has actually outbeat our performance. That means to say that there are some small mistakes that we have made that have caused a small loss in profitability. And so you can see that um, we have very closely followed the system curve. So most of our execution has been pretty much flawless, but there have been one or two little things there that we haven't quite been able to beat the system curve on at this time. So of course, we'll look to get better in our terms of our performance over here. But I would recommend that all of the customers here at Master of the Markets, especially those of you trading with the live trade membership advanced and above, Vedanta Elite, you should definitely have cash and system curves for your trades. Monitor what your performance is like um, and see if you can beat ours, you know, see if you can beat the system. Uh, that's always the best way. Uh, that happens after a period of experience. But you can see that we do have a slight gap in between the two at the moment. It's nothing significant uh, because our execution is pretty much on par. So as I said already, 11.68% last week, £5,150 as a core return, um, which is an impressive result. Uh, for the last week, but for this week, net flat on both the live trading room and the Vedanta Elite trading rooms just there. Which then takes me nicely on to the topic of this week, which is all around backtesting and how we can have more conviction in our backtesting. So, 
how can I have more conviction in my backtesting is the question that we're asking here. And I've broken this down into a series of concise bullet points. So I have seven key bullet points which I want to discuss. And the first one is orientated around the top level thinking, which is your concept and your objective. So what is the concept of the trading system that you have built? Um, what, what is the idea of it? What is it meant to be able to uh, achieve? And then what's the objective? So what is your core goal with the trading system? You know, are you looking to capture a swing in the market? Are you looking to capture just 30 minutes worth of um, a breakout? You know, what's your objective and what concept is it based on? Is it based on uh, market maker accumulation? Is it based on the profit release phase? Is it based um, on what, what? what is the actual concept, if you like? So if you think about it, if you were building a car, uh, you would ask yourself, you know, what is it that the car is useful for? Is it good for a family? Is it good for um, someone in their mid-twenties who is looking for something that's a little bit racy and, and quick off the mark uh, with a small 0 to 60 time, but it's quite bumpy because, you know, it's quite low to the ground. Whatever it is, what's the concept, right? What is the core concept of what you want to achieve? And then what's the objective? You know, what objective should it meet? You know, how fast should it get from 0 to 60? How many miles you want per gallon um, as an economy? You know, these are all your specifics. So you need a top level thinking your concept and your objective. Before you even start to back test, you need to do that. And then of course, you need to get clear about the instruments you want to test. Now here at Master the Markets, um, a lot of people think we actually just trade foreign exchange. And that's absolutely untrue because our concepts and methodologies work across every market in the world. Now, the liftoff model itself has been designed to work on any market in the world because it is based purely around price action only. And that is very, very important to understand. So know that that is important. Know the instruments. So is it stocks you're trading? Is it going to be for exchange pairs? Is it going to be commodities? What are the instruments you're going to test? Then of course you need a strong crib sheet. And if you look at my video from the last week on Forex Friday, I actually went into depth about what constitutes a strong crib sheet, what you can actually make to give you a very strong edge in the market. And remember, this has all been done in depth here at Master of the Markets. The only way that I can even talk to you about this and have the confidence and the conviction, the excitement and the passion for this is because we're living it. We're doing it in real time as well. And as you know, very transparent across our account statements as well. And if you look back again at last last um, last week's Forex Friday, I actually showed you all the trades that we've taken for the year so far. Um, on our account statements actually. So that was the core goal just there for that Forex Friday. Uh, and I of course demonstrated that with the strong crib sheets give us the confidence to take those trades. Those strong crib sheets need to have quantified rules. So you need to quantify your rules. There are so many videos that I've spoken on about this. So I'm not gonna go into detail about it, but you need to have confidence and zero doubt about what your rule set is going to look like. And that's when you then start to back test. Um, I'm going to give you away one key tip for what I do in backtesting when I'm using the MetaTrader 4 environment. One thing that I do to make myself sure that I don't have a bias in the market. I'm going to show you what that is now. Uh, so stay tuned for that um, for that, that, that hot tip. Uh, so that's quantified rule set. You must have a quantified rule set. Then you need to have a minimum number of trades. So we recommend a minimum number of 100 trades. Um, that is a minimum and five years of data. So either whichever one it comes earlier, if it's um, it, whichever, sorry, whichever not, whichever one comes earlier, whichever one comes later, whether it's 100 trades or five years. So if you get to five years and you've only got 87 trades, then you need to do maybe another year to get up to the 100. Uh, if you've got 100 trades um, already, but you've only done three years of testing, you've got to take it to five years. So whichever is later out of these two, 100 trades or five years, we recommend as a minimum for a swing trading system. So an end of day trading system where you just use 15 minutes a day, that's a minimum. Then for intraday trading, you need, again, I put one month here. I actually meant to put one year. So I'm gonna change that right now with you. Uh, let me save that. Let's go back into the presentation. There we go. So you need a minimum of 50 trades and that's one year. So whichever one comes earlier for an intraday trading system, you need to know how your system has performed for a period of a year or a minimum of 50 trades. Whichever one comes later, you get your 50 trades, do the whole year. If you get the year and you've only got 47 trades, 
get another three trades. So that's what you need to have as a minimum for that. You also then need to know your maximum drawdown, okay? This is really, really important information. If you don't have this, you're sort of shooting uh, in the dark just here because what you really need to understand is when you map out your equity curve, you know, it's gonna look a little bit, that's a poor equity curve, so let's ignore that I did that. Your equity curve is gonna look a little bit like this. You know, you can see this kind of thing happening. Uh, and the, something like that. And what you need to know is what is the maximum drawdown? The drawdown is basically the, the distance from the top of the equity curve to the trough. And you need to know which one of these distances is the greatest in the equity curve because that will tell you what your maximum drawdown is. So it may be that your maximum drawdown is, let's say, 6%, for example, in order to achieve a 70% upside. But you need to know that information because if you don't know that you have a maximum drawdown of 6%, how do you know when to cut your strategy off? How will you know that? You won't know that information. It's very, very critical. So you've got to know that. And your loss cluster as well. How many trades are constituted in this maximum drawdown? Is it six losing trades in a row? Is it seven? Is it eight? What is the number? Because when I'm trading in real time, I want to know how many losses I can take as a maximum. This is really, really, really important. So you've got to know this information. So keep this information with you. Keep it strong. Let me give you that hot tip that I was talking about, about how we backtest here at Master the Markets. Any kind of backtesting that's done here at Master Markets is done on a bar by bar base. So when I go forward, I use the F12 key in MetaTrader 4, and that makes sure that I can't see what's happened in the future. So if I go to this bar, for example, just here, I know that over here, let's take a quick look. So yeah, this is the one. So over here, I know that this bar is basically 0.48. It's closed below the mid-range. And as far as I'm concerned, that's a PSWB. If you don't know about the three types of turning points, make sure you look back on our videos from previous um, Forex Fridays. We'll explain the three types of turning points as well. But this is a PSWB, which means I can enter um, the market on the, on the low. But I wouldn't necessarily enter this market because it hasn't closed below the open. So this would not be a valid trade for me and it invalidates itself anyway. But there you go. You can see that I don't know what's happening in the future by using the F12 key on MetaTrader. So if I do it bar by bar, it doesn't give me a bias. It's also less confusing as well. I strongly recommend that anyone doing backtesting using the MT4 environment uses this technique of bar by bar using the F12 key on your keyboard. Roll the chart back and then transition things bar by bar and then stop and then look for your setup. Once you get your setup, imagine that you're placing your entry and your stop, and that's what you log in your backtesting journal. You know, this is the way to really get conviction and confidence in the testing that you're doing. And if you don't do this, then of course your backtesting isn't going to be consistent. And if your backtesting isn't consistent, it means nothing for you in forward testing. You can't use it as a gauge for results. So that's one of the strengths that we have here at Master Markets for sure is very solid backtesting. And you can see that our forward testing matches our backtesting results as well. Our real life um, account statements do match what we've uh, achieved in historical testing. Very, very important just there. That's pretty much it from me for this week. I look forward to speaking to you all soon. Until the next time, stay disciplined, follow your plan, and trade like a master. Bye.